This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. The last two weeks, I've been exploring new tools to kind of broaden my horizon when it comes to Webflow, how I use these tools, what tools might be better, what all that kind of stuff. So last week on stream, I took a look at Framer and I want to give you three reasons as to why I think Framer is better than Webflow. I'll be doing another video where I, I say three reasons why Webflow is better than Framer, but I thought this is a quick, fun way to tell you guys what I learned and some things to consider for your own projects. So the first one is code components. This is something that I looked into, I did a few episodes on trying to fill in the missing documentation as it were for code components. I was very skeptical about them at first because of course no code tools attract designers who don't want to code. Yet you've got this ecosystem that means you essentially have to code. But after using it, it is super powerful. For someone like myself who's comfortable in React um, and who can write code, to really add a hell of a lot more functionality to your website. Uh, I learned that it was actually pre-rendered. Typically React, it downloads React and then renders the page, but it doesn't, it does that before, and that is sweet. One thing that worries me about Webflow is you don't know where that ceiling is. You could prescribe the solution of Webflow, but very quickly, certainly for my projects, I hit those ceilings of Webflow where we need to look elsewhere. You need to create all these sort of ways to get around its limitations. So with code components, that gives me an, an air of comfortability, let's say, of knowing that it can extend should I need it to. I'd love to be able to access the CMS inside of code components inside of Framer, so Framer, please. I think my second point is the simplicity of use. Framer have eradicated this idea of reusable classes. Now I've done another episode on why I think class names are dead. The caveat is that you should, I recommend, you use components to basically recreate that reusability. But from a designer's perspective and from a user's perspective, not having to worry about all of that. The point is, is that it obfuscates those from you. And speaking of obfuscation, it obfuscates a lot of the kind of web development terminology, the confusing aspects of it, that again, lowers that bar to entry when it comes to Framer. The caveat being is that this does not translate anywhere else things like stacks, things like frames. These concepts or the language they use does not translate. It's fine if you want to stay in Framer, but if you want to move elsewhere or whatever, you've got to learn what those equivalents are to be able to translate them. Stacks, for instance, are basically just flex. And overall, that means Framer can just build very simple marketing and landing pages. And I don't mean simple in design. This is a key distinction I want to make. The design itself can be complex, complex layouts, fancy looking shadows and things like that, particularly with code components. I mean simple in the functionality. You're limited in the CMS, what it can connect to, how it can connect to these things. So the ceiling is, I think, is quite low on a frame website. However, if you don't need to extend across, uh, across that ceiling, then you can create very simple websites, very quickly, very easily. And I just want to say, if you're enjoying the content I'm creating and you want to support the channel, check out flowstate.dev slash store and pick yourself up a t-shirt. It really means a lot to me. And the third one is just the company. It's a lot smaller, a lot more nimble than Webflow. They do office hours. I, I saw a tweet saying that they do 15 minute phone calls for whatever you want. The other thing is that they ship fast, bring out new features at lightning pace. The price of it's a lot cheaper. You don't need a workspace plan. You just need your site plan. You design unlimited sites on your, on your workspace plan, which you don't pay for. I think you can pay for it, but whatever. But then you pay for the price, which I think is something like $19, similar, similar price to uh, Webflow. But again, you're not paying for that workspace plan. So there's my three things of why I think Framer is better than Webflow. It's up to you whether you think that they are something that's worth transitioning to or even considering Framer or whether those things are a no-go to you. But more things I want to explore more of to really finalize my opinion is their integrations. I've seen a great uh, integration with Superbase and I want to know if that's done pre-rendered and or whatever should be a very simple episode for me to film. But I also then want to recreate some of the websites that I've made and just really discover 
where the limits are because it's not until you really use Webflow for an extended period of time you start to see exactly where those limits are. So there's more I want to explore and I'll share along the way. Uh, so subscribe if you haven't already. Oh, and before you go, I'll leave a link to an episode I did a long time ago when I very first looked at Framer. My opinion really hasn't changed an awful lot. So I still think the things I shared in that video are very valid. And so until next time, happy no coding.